yeah, you could have like seven, five, six, seven, eight claims closed the first week, which I'm going to tell you right now, Thomas, <clears throat> and anybody who's watching this, who has ever been on a storm, especially a hurricane, knows that 90% of new people aren't going to have closed claims within the first four weeks, let alone the first day. So if, if you're on the board day one, your manager is going to notice that, right? Especially if you're like every day you're turning in new, you're, you're turning in closed claims. They're like, this person has no experience, but they're turning, you know, I'm getting, I've got four claims closed from them by, you know, the end of the first week. In this video, I talk with Thomas Curtis, a new adjuster from Louisiana about licenses, training, and whether or not you should take hourly or fee schedule on your first CAT deployment, starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. I'm here with Thomas Curtis, and he is a new adjuster who is looking for some guidance um, as he starts to build his career. It looks like Curtis or Thomas, sorry, looks like you've already got some licenses in hand and you have some questions um, about the, the kind of things that are going to move the needle for you as you get rolling in this business. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of uh, where you're at in the process and, you know, um, we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Uh, Thomas Curtis. I'm from Monroe, Louisiana, kind of in the northeast part of the state. Uh, we escaped most of the major hurricane disaster, but uh, yeah. we, we get the, after it's settling down a little bit, we still get damaged, but not like in New Orleans and all that. But um, I uh, left my other job back in August. Uh, a friend of mine that does adjusting had came into the um, into the store that I worked at, and uh, just got to kind of casually talking about, it. he was buying a new computer. In fact, I was one of the managers at Best Buy. Okay. And, uh, he was buying a new computer and asking him what he's using it for. And he's like a cat adjuster. And I'm like, what is a cat adjuster? A cat adjuster? Is that like a dog <laughs> adjuster? Right. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't get to elaborate here. Um, and he did, uh, kind of went into, went into a little more detail on it. And, um, some of the things he was saying just definitely uh, caught my interest, you know, as far as being your own boss and uh, the potentially working, you know, six months out of the year or something, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I was used to the five, six days a week, uh, every single day fighting for vacation, you know, just like a lot of other Right. People. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, got to put in like three months in advance to get a two days off. Right. Yeah, and you might get it. You might get <laughs> um, it. Yeah. You might get it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm, I'm so I'm in a better position now than you know. I guess a lot of people. I, I've heard that a lot of people that come into adjusting new are in their late forties or fifties or whatever because their kids are gone and usually have some money and stuff like that. You know, so uh, that I talked to my wife and we kind of went for it, and uh, so that's where I'm. At I've I've went to some trainings and uh, like you pointed out I've got some several licenses and uh, certifications and stuff and just I, I, I hit it in a very slow part of the season it seems yeah uh, yep. it, it it's good to, to do it's good it's, it's good to do. <laughs> yeah good because All you right. can you've got time to get to to get training and and to to collect gear and all that stuff. <laughs> What's up, Adjuster? Are you brand new to claims? Have you had people tell you that you've got to learn how to use Xactimate to do hurricane, hail, tornado, wildfire, wind, or water claims on houses and businesses? Well, they're absolutely right. You must know Xactimate X1 to be able to work for most companies in our industry and to give your new high paying career its best chance. Adjuster TV has put together a comprehensive Xactimate training that takes you from how to download and install Xactimate to building sketch diagrams, 
documenting your file, how to import and label photos, and so much more. And it's all done with Signature Adjuster TV style. No frills, everything you need, and nothing you don't. And not only that, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg because it's included as part of your Adjuster TV Plus membership. You're not gonna have to travel to take this training in person. You can do it at your own pace, and you'll be able to rewatch the trainings whenever you need a refresher for as long as you're a member. If you've never used Xactimate before, then you need this complete step-by-step -step training exclusively inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Join now at adjustertv.com slash x1. Do not show up to a job interview at an IA firm without Xactimate X1 installed on your system and you not knowing how to use it. Access this training and dozens of hours of other independent property claims training video series right now at adjustertv.com slash X1. So tell me specifically like what training and certifications and maybe like how many licenses you have. Uh, I've I've got currently I've got nine licenses uh, okay. in, in different states, um, and make all the Gulf states, you know, and uh, went ahead and grabbed Oklahoma and Kentucky when they had their big storms because they do catch stuff sure. regularly. Oh yeah, and uh, the Carolinas, but anyway, um, and I got Xactimate, uh, my Xactimate X1. I um, am currently in the middle. I, this week, actually, I should be able to finish my State Farm certification. And um, okay, I'm in a, a Hay California adjusters, earthquake adjusters, okay, uh, class, and um, the, also the Hay um, wind and hail. I had to think for a second. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. And Hague has, I mean, they have a humongous pile of trainings in there. If you probably noticed, um, I, you know, just to kind of like, just touch on Hague for, for just a moment. Um, I would highly recommend anybody, especially anybody who's new or somebody who, who feels like they, maybe they need some, you know, extra knowledge on construction and in very particular damage identification, because that's kind of their wheelhouse at Hague is there because they're a forensic engineering company, um, their damage ID, they're kind of like the standard that everybody uses, that all the carriers use, right? So when you look at hail damage or wind damage, it's you, you're doing, you know, you're you're judging what you find on a roof based on Hague's standard, right? That's if if you have a trainer that comes out in the field with you or you go to training or whatever, they may have the Hague, you know, the these things. All right. I got a whole stack of them here, but the, uh, you know, the, all these little yeah. books that they have, they're super durable. The pages are really thick and they show like mechanical, you know, wear and tear, what's a, what's a shingle defect and all, I mean, it's all this stuff. And you can like, when you're standing there talking to the homeowner and they're like, well, what about those cracks? Right. Isn't that caused by the storm? And you can say, no, as a matter of fact, those cracks are caused by, um, I can't read it because I don't have my glasses on, but it's caused by whatever it says right here, right? Um, right. This is a shingle defect where the, the roller that created the shingle, let's see if I can get a picture, make that. Yep. When they made those shingles, a piece of that, the applique stuck to the roller and the rest of the applique stuck, stayed on the shingle. So that's not storm damage, right? So you can, you can say that to the homeowner or the contractor who's trying to get you to buy stuff, right? 100%. Right. Take as much Hague training as you can. Um, I would even recommend their Hague Certified Reviewer program. If you go to HagueCertifiedReviewer.com, um, they have three levels currently. Um, the, each level covers, like level one covers construction. Um, level two covers uh, damage ID and scoping and things like that. Dam level four or level three is Xactimate and Symbility or CoreLogic. You know, it's the software which they're using, which you, you've learned as in level one and two, putting it together and, and, you know, using the software to write an estimate, which is, I mean, that's what we do, right? right. Um, exactly. So I would strongly recommend, you know, just, just to kind of kick it off with, you know, talking about certifications, um, even if, let's put it this way, the knowledge and training that you, and the knowledge and information that you get from taking those certification courses is more valuable than the certification itself, right? Because you can use that in the field. And the only thing that the IA firms and their carriers really care about is how, is how well you do your claims, right? How 
productive you are. In other words, like how many claims are you able to close a day, right? I think on typical cat claims, wind and hail, not talking about like large loss or big water claims or fire losses or whatever, but like just kind of the stuff that we do, the normal things that we do as adjusters, um, a new adjuster should be closing four claims a day. I think by the end of their first event, um, at least, you know, definitely absolutely 100,000% by the end of their second event. Um, as long yep. as they're, you know, you can be a little bit below that if you have a high quality claim, you're writing an accurate estimate because you understand construction because you either got it from being in, in construction or you're taking these trainings um, that teach you construction. Um, and then you're able to talk intelligently with the homeowner, right? So, you, you know, they say, oh, I got this water spot on the ceiling. Oh, this is what the guy's going to do when he comes out. And this is exactly how I'm going to write my estimate. You know, you talk to the contractors intelligently and write a quality estimate because you have like understanding of like these, there's a, there's like a kind of a medium sized basket of like, like damaged things that we restoration process that we do over and over and over and over again. And so right. you're not going to be like doing total losses all the time. You may do total losses once in a while, but you're yeah. mostly, mostly going to be doing shingles, roof, a lot of rough claims, you know, most claims probably be rough claims, especially for a cat. If you're wanting to do cat, mostly mm -hmm. going to be rough claims, right? And roof exciting, exterior finishes, things getting blown off or trampoline flies across the yard and, you know, bangs into the side of the house, takes out a couple of windows and puts a big hole in the siding, right? So how are you going to fix that? You know, it rained in and caused some damage on the drywall on the inside and there's a big stain on the floor, right? You got to know how to write an estimate for that. So well. whether or not, like I said, if you... Um, care about the certification or whether you put it on your resume or not, getting that, that knowledge through those training courses is absolutely critical. So if you go do Hague stuff, you can buy those the books. Um, you can, they have little tools and gadgets and gauges and things like that that are, that are useful, shingle gauges. Um, any training that they have, they're Hague certified inspector, um, Hague certified reviewer, um, the, their residential roof, you know, damage ID program, all that stuff. Uh, if you use code adjuster TV, you get a 10% uh, discount. Yeah. So it's a little something yeah. for you. For certifications, those are the things that I primarily would, would go for. It's going to be like the really, really like the core hard skills, construction, scoping, um, Xactimate. And I would also learn core logic, Symbility, um, Liberty Mutual and Safeco are using, uh, Core Logic, and those are like top ten insurance companies. And if you, you know, if you're able to 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 handle claims in Symbility, um, Core Logic, you're going to be have a, a whole lot more opportunities than if you if you just stick with Xactimate. Um, Xactimate yeah. still is is pretty. I, I won't say it's not universally used, especially now, but it's still they're the big they're the big player on the block. So you got to have skills in Xactimate. But some carriers are, are, for some reason, they're going over to Symbility. Um, so it absolutely pays. Download a free trial, I think, if they have one. Um, and, you know, for sure, use that. Because you can put that on your resume and say, hey, listen, I know how to write an estimate in there. And, you know, I'm happy to work for any carrier that uses Core Logic, And that will kick open a lot of doors for you. Um, so those are the things that I would, I would concentrate on. And, and again, like I said, I, it's not necessarily like you're looking for things to put on your resume as, as to say, I've got a certification in this or a certification in that. It's that you want to get those core skills because honestly, the firms, truthfully, they, they're going to look at your resume and see that you're st an upright standing human being who is able to, to climb a ladder and, you know, well, you've got some Xactimate training on here. Uh, you got your state farm certification <clears throat> and you've got nine licenses or 15 license or licenses or whatever, let's put you to work and see how you do. How you do on that first event is how they're going to judge you going forward, right? So you could have 10,000 things on there, certifications, but if you fall on your face on your first storm deployment, right. it's for nothing. It, doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Um, those things only carry weight. I would truly, I would say that they really only carry weight for you to build your skills so that when you get on an event, things are not like you're seeing, not, not seeing things for the very first time, which is yeah. tends to derail people. Um, so 
Yeah. So any, any thoughts or questions about, you know, kind of all, all that stuff? Yeah. Um, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but it's a lot of good stuff. Um, so I, I, I do have some questions that I wanted to ask you. Um, sure. Just kind of get your, get your opinion on. Um, some of the things that I've been having a dilemma on is um, as far as trainings, I, I feel like you can just be in over your head on, on getting trained and I don't know what, what is use, actual useful, you know, or right. what's, uh, what's not going to benefit you that much. You're putting time and resources into something that's not that beneficial because, you know, as a new adjuster, you don't really know. Right. Um, and rope and harness was one of them versus just getting a goat. Uh, right. you know, I've, um, I, I see a lot of people saying getting New York license and stuff, yep. uh, is, is very beneficial, even for a new adjuster. Um, so as, as far as the, uh, rope and harness and, and stuff like that, what, what is your opinion? Is that looks like you got rope up behind you there possibly. Um, yeah, I do. I've got, I've got a whole <laughs> rope and harness here. So here's the thing. So with, with rope and harness, it's, it's, you, you really, I think any adjuster, anybody that climbs roofs for a living really should use fall protection on roofs that are steeper, like a 712 or steeper um, for the utmost in safety. If you're a daredevil and you, you know, don't want to spend the time to, to set up your rope and harness gear and use it and then tear it all down, which is going to add time. Um, that's kind of, it's kind of up to you. Um, right. I was a little bit of a daredevil and I'm probably lucky to be alive. I'll just put it that way. Um, cause I've climbed, I, there's been a number of roasts that I've climbed in the past that I look back on. I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I am, I can't believe I'm sitting here without like, you know, a neck brace and you know, whatever right. broken back. Um, so I, I think that uh, rope and harness is one of those things that I, I really think that people it's, it's, it's pretty important for them to get in particular, some carriers um, and some firms have a deal worked out where if, if you have to use rope and harness on a, um, on a loss, then you can bill a lot extra, not just like steep and high, but like more than what you normally charge for steep and high. If you're using fall protection gear like that. Um, in some cases you may be able able to um, get extra work as a two-story steep person, like a ladder assist. Um, and you can do that through a lot of the firms. If you say, hey, you know, I've got a, you know, a one-ton pickup truck with a long bed on it, and I've got a 40-foot ladder and a 24-foot ladder, and I've got a full fall protection set up. You know, if, if you got people that need to access a dangerous, you know, or like spooky roof, give me a call. I'll charge. 50 bucks a pop or whatever it is, you know, they want to do. Um, you can go through Hancock, um, which is they do ladder assist and like roof inspections. Uh, Crawford has uh, a program called Crawford inspection services. If you go to cis.claims.global, um, you can get signed up and it, they just, it's roof inspections only whether it's for a claim or not for a claim. So it could be something totally unrelated to a claim where they just need somebody to go take some pictures or diagram and measure a roof. Um, and then, you know, you get paid per, yeah. per job or whatever. So you can kind of, in a way you can, you know, if, if you, if you like doing that kind of thing, if you're, you know, the ropes are, you know, the, there's all kinds of little gadgets and gear and the knots and all that stuff. And it's, it's, if you're into that, I mean, it could be a kind of a cool side hustle for you, um, to do in the downtime, right. Especially in Louisiana. I mean, it's probably not going to be minus 25 degrees down there very often, like it is occasionally gets up here. <laughs> um, so you could probably climb roofs year round, um, in your area or close by. Right. So that's kind of my feeling on rope and harness. I think if you're running gun and you, you know, if you get into a neighborhood on a hail storm, let's say you're in, you know, a lot of cities in the Midwest, they're going to have these little neighborhoods that have these one story ranches in them with four twelve roofs. Right. And you spend a whole summer in that town or city and you might break out your rope and harness gear, maybe once or twice, maybe a half a dozen times. If you go end up in the neighborhood with the big, the Victorians that are like, you know, it's 
26 feet to the, the gutter and then it's a 12, 12, right? I'm, I'm 100% going to use your open harness on that roof. Um, yeah. but you're not going to use it that often. You might use it. It's like having like a 32 foot ladder, right? This is kind of what happened with me is that I always carried a 24 foot extension ladder and a 32 foot extension ladder. And I would either not touch my 32 foot ladder all year or use it on every claim. It was just one of those things like it just depended on where they sent you. Right. Um, so I think right. it's a good skill to have. Um, and it's a good, it's a good way to, to be more self-sufficient to say, you know, cause a lot of times you'll pull up to a house and be like, there's no way in the world I'm climbing that. There's, just, there's no way. Right. If you've right. got rope and harness and you have a long enough ladder, you can get on just about anything. And the things that you can't get on like apartment buildings and things, a lot of times contractors going to be there and he's going to have a tall ladder or they have a, a hatch on the roof that you can just walk out on. Um, so I like, I always liked being like perfectly self-sufficient where I didn't have to call ladder assist or reschedule to have the contractor meet me there with a long ladder or whatever. So I carried a long ladder and rope and harness. Um, as far as licenses go, I tell everybody, um, because wind and hail is going to be your bread and butter to start, you know, storm season, um, starts up in March, April, especially down the farther south you go, the earlier it starts. Um, the chances of there being a big hurricane every single year is not very good. We've had a few years in a row where we've had like, it's been very active. I mean, a couple of years ago, we had like 20 named storms. And I mean, it was, it was unprecedented season. Um, this year might be crickets, you know, it might be one category five storm that comes within like 1500 miles of the coast and then goes off out to sea and dissipates. I mean, and that's it, right. Or in a couple of tropical storms, it's yeah. no way to know it's those guys, the, the, the meteorological guys, the, you know, the, the hurricane prediction dudes, I mean, I think they're close, but I think it's like, uh, you know, when you say there's, there's going to be 12 to 19 named storms, I mean, that's a pretty big, you know, window. Right. So you're going to be doing, you're going to want to do wind and hail. Right. And that's going to be in the Midwest. Like Texas is going to get a lot of hail. Colorado is going to get a lot of hail. Kansas city, Chicago, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Fargo, St. Louis. Right. So most of the States, thankfully in that kind of quarter between like, we'll say Ohio and like the front range of Colorado and Canada and Mexico, a lot of those States don't require licenses. Like, None of the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa do not have licenses. I think I'm pretty sure Iowa doesn't have a license. Kansas does not have a license. Missouri, no license. Illinois, believe it or not, no license. Um, so I tell people, I say, get Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Minnesota, 1000% because Minneapolis, St. Paul is a big metro area. And for some reason, I don't know why the pricing for materials and labor and to, to get work done in Minneapolis is two or three times the minimum of what it is in like Kansas city or even Milwaukee, which is just right down the highway. Right. Um, which, so when you go do a claim and plus they have matching for siding, right? So if you go do claims in Minneapolis for hail claims, you got a roof on one side of siding that without the matching, it's going to be like, two to three times what it would be in Kansas city. Right. So if it's, if in Kansas city, it would be a $10,000 claim. It might end up being like a $28,000 claim in Minneapolis for, for the exact same thing. And then you wrap the siding and now you're talking about a $60,000 claim you're billing on. Yeah. That, right. And it's not a whole lot of extra work. You just have to measure those other elevations, get the siding yeah. sample. And um, so Texas, Oklahoma, Minnesota, uh, Indiana, 100% get Florida, 100% get New York. Um, it okay. is, it's a, it's a big deal state and, and it's something that pops. You know, if you want to talk about something, one of the few things I think that really pops on a, on a resume is going to be New York license adjuster. Oh, and by the way, down here, here's the rest of my licenses. Right. Um, and then I would probably ideally Thomas, um, you really want to get all the licenses to be, to be totally truthful because it, it opens up, <laughs> it opens up, um, a lot of deployment opportunities for you. You can go anywhere in the country, right. And you can go to Hawaii or Alaska yeah. if they have, you know, if they get a 9.2 up in 
you know, earthquake up in Alaska. Um, and even more importantly, in the downtime, and even start, probably starting right now, um, you have the opportunity to do remote work, right? And if, so if you're going to be a desk adjuster and write claims, um, some firms will, will, if you're a new person, they'll, they'll, some firms will let you do this. Some firms won't want to put you on desk claims until you've got some experience in the field. But either way, if you're living in Louisiana and you want to adjust, you know, the, the company has a bunch of claims. They have a big snowstorm in New Hampshire and they need people to like, they're scoping photo and scoping those. And then they're sending them out to desk, remote desk adjusters who are just sitting at home, getting on their laptop every day. You have to have a New Hampshire license to write those claims, right? So having as many licenses as possible, if you don't want to get every single one of them, Southeast 100%, um, the Northwest and the Northeast is, is where I would kind of focus on getting licensed. Because especially the Northeast and the Northwest are heavily populated, right? Um, Seattle, Portland, and there's a lot of th cities along the I-5 corridor up there. On the other side of the country, you've got, you know, all the, the states around Boston, you know, I mean, from like basically Boston or a little bit north of Boston all the way down to like, you know, into Virginia, it's one city, right? You drive from that whole distance, you can drive for like a day and you're just, it's nonstop populate. It's, it's, there's no like fields or like, oh, there's farms here as you're driving down the, it's just all people, right? They're all packed in on the coast there. So there's tens of millions of people that live in, in those areas, New York, all those places. So you want to get some licenses up there. You can be busy, be real busy um, doing claims up there. So those are my thoughts on rope and harness and uh, licenses for sure. Obviously sure. getting every single license is, is pretty expensive. Um, so that's yeah. why I kind of tell people that they, if they have limited resources and they're, you know, if they're, they're just getting started out, you're probably, your chances of getting deployed first are going to be in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Colorado, you know, Denver, the front range, to Fort, Fort Collins to Pueblo, they get hit with hail all the time. I mean, even in January, they'll get hit with hail. Um, and then the Dakotas, right? You could be, you could find yourself up in Rapid City, um, Des Moines, Iowa, um, Kansas City, you know, St. Louis. Those are, those are big, those are pretty big cities. Like, you know, the city itself might be five or 600,000 people, but the suburbs around it are, make it well over a million for those places. Um, right. And they get hit with hail every summer seems like so that's okay that's, what do you got probably need to be recording this myself <laughs> oh well you'll have a, a recording of it when it's, it's on it youtube doesn't go on i hope it does because uh it's a lot of good stuff it will here. for sure so um when i was when i was at my at the adjusting school i went in uh houston at mile high um there was discussion over whenever you first get your first deployment, um, taking fee schedule or hourly. Uh, and, and a lot of people say take hourly because you're going to be slower, not necessarily know what you're doing and uh, what have you, you know, and I, I just, I hear different opinions on that. Is that just a matter of uh, preference, I guess, or is there a, what, what would be your recommendation on that? I mean, uh, were, were they suggesting that you had a choice? Yeah. Um, that's a good there, question. There was a, one, one, of, one of the graduate, one of the graduates was there and uh, she, um, she had, was telling us about her first deployment and she said whenever she signed on, had, she had the option to do fee schedule or hourly and they signed her on for like, I don't know, $40 an hour or something like that, you know, and uh, whatever you choose, you had to stay on for the whole deployment with that company. Uh, but, and they were saying that was a good option for new people. Sure. Um, but I, but I, and, and I am new, but the guy who got me into, uh, into adjusting, I've been doing a lot of shadowing with him for months now, helping him with, uh, uh you know, all of his daily claims and stuff and, uh, writing the estimates and so on and so on. So I, I feel fairly comfortable, uh, at, at least, you know, I'm not going in just completely blind. Uh, right. But I still don't know, you know, I don't want to get in there and just be fumbling around with sure. a handful of. Right. So he, this is what I would say to, 
to that question. So th the factors that you have to take into consideration are, you know, the, really the main factor is going to be how, how quickly are you going to be able to get up to speed and start closing claims, right? Um, <clears throat> if you're, if you spend a lot of time beforehand getting training, you know, going to my house, awesome. I would still recommend getting additional training. I would still recommend, Hey, all, all that stuff. Um, because it's just only going to make you more knowledgeable. Um, the other thing that I would strongly recommend, and I, I feel like I say this in every video, but practice all the time, like at yeah. least three times a week, set aside an hour and say, I've got, all right, I got Xactimate open in front of me. I got my camera. I got my tape measure. Let's pretend like we got a water spot on the ceiling, right? Go outside, take a risk photo, right? And then take a photo, address verification photo, you know, the, the, take the like real photos, right? right. Walk around the house, get, the, you know, get your overview shots of the front side of the house, right? So you want to look at like the front left corner, get a, sh a photo showing the left side of the house in the front in your frame, then go to the other side, the right front side, get the right side of the house and the front side, and then do that all the way around the house, right? And just practice doing it. Cause you're going to have to do that on every claim. Uh, go inside, take overview shots of the room, right? One, get in this corner over here, take a shot this way, overview shot is what you're going to label it, right? Go to the other corner, take another shot. And if you need to take another photo to make sure you get everything in there, take that photo, right? And then I'm going to take a picture of like the water spot on the ceiling, the damaged area, pretend, right? You're just pretending that's, you know, it's a four foot square area, right? Or yeah, four foot square. Make sure I, I kind of like to get like a window or a corner of a door to give it context where it is in the room and then get a close up of that and then measure the room and then crack open Xactimate, um, import and label my photos. I mean, there's only what, like maybe 10, 15 photos max on that. And then write a little estimate, right? So you've got water spot on the ceiling. So you got some drywall insulation, seal and paint, you know, maybe some texture or something like that. Uh, maybe some contents manipulation or like masking or whatever it is that, you know, you, you feel is appropriate to do for that particular claim. And then a little bit of debris removal to take the, the, the you know, the, the stuff that gets cut out and it's going to be thrown away. You owe the, the insured and the contractor a little bit of money to, to toss that, you know, they might just throw it in the dumpster out in the, or uh, the insured's residential trash can or the guy might put it in the back of his truck and take it to the dump. Right. So you, you owe them a little bit of money for that. So you got a little super short estimate, right? And then you've imported and labeled your photos, get into the diary place in Xactimate where you can write an activity diary and say, you know, scoped loss, um, no damage found to the exterior of home, um, damage to uh, ceiling in guest bedroom caused by windblown rain, um, explained, you know, scope settlement, depreciation, mortgagee, whatever, a deductible to insured on site, close file, right? Just do, just write a little diary entry like that. And you can also do the same thing and, and create a, a little bit more of an advanced thing, which would be a general loss report and do the same thing. Um, and then close your computer, you're done, right? And then do that again right. the next day and do it a couple times a week, three times, every day if you want to. Um, and th what that is is seeking to accomplish is to is to build muscle memory. It's like driving a stick, right? When you first learn how yeah. to drive a stick, you're trying to coordinate your, your left foot with the this and everything. But right. 10 years into it, you could drive across the country and not remember touching the gear shift, right? Because it's just automatic. Right. You're trying to get yeah. to that point as, as somebody who's doing field claims, right? So it's second nature to you, risk photo, address verification, four corners of the house. And you can do an, an exterior one. You, know, you could pretend like that you're going to, you know, be bold and brave and we're going to replace the roof on this thing. So you're going to get up and do a roof inspection, right? Do the same thing with your photos. Still have to get elevation photos, right? And if, and then write that estimate, do an activity diary and or a GLR, and then you're done, right? So you're, you're, you're seeing the process and there's still other things you have to add in there when you do your claims, like you gotta do invoice, you know, whatever the, the I firm gives you to do for invoice. Um, if you're, if you're not doing hourly, um, and then, you know, like a damage evaluation form, sometimes it depends on the carrier. They may have like some, like, 
goofball, like proprietary claims management system that you got to figure out how to get into. And it may be like 15 year old technology. So it doesn't make any sense, right? It's not, it's not intuitive because you practiced doing the basics of the claim and kind of building that muscle memory, moving around mm -hmm. through the house, like actually physically doing it, not just like sitting there, you know, to take 18 pictures of the cat and then label them something different, right? <laughs> Go and do it. Um, yeah. Because when you get on site and what I'm getting to here, you know, is to help me make that decision, whether I'm going to take hourly or whether I'm going to do fee schedule is you have to, what, no matter how you get paid, you have to build in time into your schedule to learn everything else that you need to learn. Right. So if, if you went and got state farm certified and then your first deployment was with all state, right. And you didn't know that you had to get all state certified. That's the only thing that's available. You're going to take the first thing that comes up, right. You're going to go work for all state. Yeah. You got to figure out all state system, right. And it's not this totally dissimilar from state farm or any other insurance company for that matter. But it's going to be have the quirks and workarounds and hacks and things like that. If you already have the, the scoping and estimating and sort of exactimate muscle memory in there in your brain already, then yeah. those things become a lot easier to do. So if you prepare, this is this is what where I'm going to make that decision, right? If I'm prepared, if I've practiced exactimate, you know, just made it a point to do it three times a week for four months, however, you know, it's March right now, February. Um, it's going to be a couple, two, three, four months before hail season really starts to like, you know, kick up its heels. Um, but I practice exactimate a little bit every single day, you know, just every little thing I could think of, well, I'm going to replace that baseboard. You know, I'm going to replace that window, just small estimates. It doesn't have to be the total losses. Right. Um, then when I get on site, all I have to do is go, this is how I would set up my inspection, whether I'm getting paid again, hourly or, um, by fee schedule, I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, the key is I'm only going to, to scope what I know that I can close that day, right? No matter how many, if it's only one, then that's what I'm going to do. Right. So yep. make my first appointment for nine o'clock in the morning, Monday or Sunday or whatever day it is that, you know, they could first day they can do it. Take all the time I need at that insurance house, no matter how big the file, the claim is, take pictures of everything, measure everything using my muscle memory. And then I'm going to take that file and I'm going to take it to the help room. And I'm going to sit in there, even though there's 10,000 people in the room and they're all trying to get the people to help them. And I'm going to do my Xactimate stuff that I practiced, my activity diary, which you're already going to have to have done already when you contacted them. Um, important label your photos, do all everything that you know how to do already. And then grab a help room person and say, Hey, listen, I got the estimate written. I got the photos, you know, imported and label. I did, uh, I've got three diary entries in there for this, that, and the other thing. Um, how do I do the thing in the all state system? How do I, you know, what do I need to do in there? Right. Oh, okay. Well, that's all you need to do to close this file. Then they, they, if you can, hold on to them, like tie, tie them to your chair or whatever, because they'll get pulled off by somebody else. Have them help you close that file, no matter what you have to do on it. And then by the end of the day, before you leave, your job is to close that one file, get that file closed, turned in. It's going to get file reviewed with all your files will get file reviewed. And if there's any corrections, if there's something missing from your file or something, you know, that they need you to do with it, they'll kick it back to you. And you get kickbacks, 20 year adjuster and you'll get kickbacks on every storm. It's just, it's just the way it is. Right. So it's not like that's a problem. Um, they'll send it back to you and say, Hey, you, you forgot to put the, you're using the wrong price list or whatever. Just correct that and send it back up. Your file looks great. Right. So now, you know, you know, well, I got to make sure the price list is right. And it may be two or three other things in there that you get calibrated on. Right. So you did one claim. So now, you know, the, like the full process, you've seen the whole process all the way through um, if I'm that prepared and I know that I can close, you know, I can do, do one a day for three days and then have like a buffer day, like a, like an admin paper day in there that where I'm make phone calls and do corrections. And in case somebody needed to reschedule or it rained or whatever, you've got an, you've got a, a blank day in there that you can kind of use to, to, you absolutely need to have every three days as a new adjuster, I would put in a day. It's not an off day. But a day where you're not, you don't have any field inspection appointments, right? So one a day for the first three days, 
a non-field day, whatever you got to do in that day. And then yeah. depending on how confident you are and the, maybe the level of complexity of your claims, maybe you do two a day, right? So you do one at nine and you do one at one and you take those to the help room and try to get them closed, right? And make sure that they're closed by the time you, even if the, the person says, all right, well, we're closing the help room down, it's nine o'clock and you still have three hours worth left to do on the claims, you know, they give you a checklist of what to do to close the claims, take them back to your hotel room, close them midnight, go to bed, get up and do it again, right? So you, you, by the end of the first week, if you do like one a day and then two a day, you could have like nine, you know, what is it? Six, yeah, you could have like seven, five, six, seven, eight claims closed the first week, which I'm gonna tell you right now, Thomas, <clears throat> and anybody who's watching this, who has ever been on a storm, especially a hurricane, knows that 90% of new people aren't going to have closed claims within the first four weeks, let alone the first day. So if, if you're on the board day one, your manager is going to notice that, right? Especially if you're like every day you're turning in new, you're, you're turning in closed claims. They're like, this person has no experience, but they're turning you know, I'm getting, I've got four claims closed from them by, you know, the end of the first week, that's going to get attention and they're going to be able, they're going to start putting, you know, that, that makes you, it puts you on their radar and it makes it to where you're more likely to get resources put towards you. Right. Cause you, when you call your manager, say, Hey, you know, I'm Thomas Curtis and I have a, you know, I've closed four claims already. And I, I wanted to I had a question for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, listen, let me have you hook you up with so-and-so he's out in the field. He's a manager and he'll meet up with you with your next house and help you with that. Right. Um, because they need those claims closed, Thomas. That's the most yeah. thing, especially in a big hurricane. Got to have closed claims, right? So, yeah. told you I, I could yap a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Simple question, right? If you're, if you're, if you are, like, say right now it is. This is this is my final answer on this. So, say pretend like right now it's September tenth, and hurricane. Jessica is screaming towards the coast and looks like it's going to wipe out Houston, New Orleans, Miami, and New York City all in just going to run around. It's just going to destroy everything, right? It's the biggest thing ever. And you are where you're at right now. I would take hourly 100%. So if gotcha. you don't have, if you haven't had the time to practice and build those, that muscle memory and take some additional training and really like, spend the time, spend their, those resources on those really core, like the, the hard skills that you need to close claims, to be effective just in general. If you haven't had time to do that, um, then 100% take the hourly. If you have, dude, do the, do the fee schedule. Cause it's going to be all, I think you're going to make a lot more money. If, if you're able to close claims, the, the first, the, the hardest claim to close is the first one. The second one's not quite as hard third one's even easier and after a while because you built the muscle memory like doing the scoping and the writing of the estimate right you're now building muscle memory in the whole process from contacting the insured to settling up with the insured doing all the little paperwork stuff that they got they make you have to do in the claim you've seen it over and over and over again by the, like the 10th one or the you know the eighth one or the 15th one you should be doing you should be up to three claims a day, um, you know. And I, nobody will do this, but I, I would tell you to try and close them on site, right? At the minimum, um, when you even on your very, very first one, you're sitting down there, you, you've scoped everything, right? Import and label your photos while you're still sitting at the house in the in your, in your truck in the driveway or it's parked on the street or whatever, because. That's a big piece of it, right? It takes time to do that. And if you're sitting there and you're importing and labeling the photos, you'd be like, ah, shoot, I forgot to get a picture of the back of the house. Jump out and get the photo, right? Because, you know, or the roof, right? The back slope of the roof, right? You might, you might be wanting to, to replace the roof, didn't get a photo of the back and you did, maybe you didn't write down the number of vents that were back there or whatever it happens, right? So now you're still at the house. So you're going to write, be able to write a more accurate estimate because you're not going to guess later at two o'clock in the morning, like everybody else is right. Well, I didn't get the measurement of the, you know, the, the, the long side of the detached garage. 
12 feet, right? They just make something up, right? And it's wrong. It's going to be wrong unless you've measured, you know, a hundred detached garages and you're like, ah, it's probably going to be 24 feet, which is probably what it will be, right? Adjusters, they, they track the number of supplements that get um, applied, you know, that, that happen to your claim, especially if the supplements are because you missed damage, you underwrote, um, you wrote it wrong, you, you misidentified, whatever it is, right? That's one of the metrics that the carriers and the IA firms track. And they, they look at that in the context of all your other metrics, right? So your customer service score, how well, you know, when, when, they, when the carrier calls back the homeowner and says, hey, you know, Mr. Johnson, you had a claim with us and, uh, you know, your adjuster Thomas Curtis was out there. We just wanted to, get to find out how he did. Da, da, da. We got some questions for you. That son of a gun, rah, 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 right? Or, oh my gosh, well, you know, he wasn't able to pay for our claim, but he was so nice and he, we really felt like he gave us a fair shake. Da, 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 da. That's, that's going to be part of your customer service score, which is the probably the biggest score, right? Your technical, which is like, you know, how good you do on your estimates, um, your policy, you know, your policy analysis, and like your coverage decisions, right? If, you, if you're having to, if you have that responsibility, all those things they track and then they track if you, how much your files reopen for whatever reason, right? And they'll, if they see a lot of them, like a higher percentage of your files reopen, they're going to look hard at why, and it's going to have an effect on whether or not they're going to want to hire you again, or give you more claims or whatever, right? So long story short, if you prepared, take the fee schedule. If you are not ready, but you're like, I'm sure. just going to, I'm going to jump in, then hourly, 100%. Yeah, well, that's, um, that, that's, that was good stuff there now. Um, and, and I do feel like I'm, I'm glad to hear that the customer service end of it is uh, oh. probably the most important because that's the one I got the most experience in. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you answered a whole bunch of my questions right there with with that spill. Um, this, you know what, Thomas, I'll tell you what, this is why for a lot of my videos, I write a script and I put it on a teleprompter because I'll just like, well, I want to talk about this. And then I'm like, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> so I, I have to like put the guardrails up. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you, you hit a whole lot of, a uh, whole lot of areas there. Um, and it was all important stuff. And like I, I told you at the beginning, it's all stuff that I need to hear. So, uh, so only question I've got on here that you kind of haven't touched on um, is like in, in adjusting is pretty much like anything else. It, or at least from what I hear and makes sense that it would be as networking. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of the best ways to network uh, in adjusting? Because like the only people that I know were the people I went to the school with and my friend, you know, um, and I, I'm assuming once you get on a deployment or get dailies or whatever, you'll start, you know, start meeting some different people or something. But is what is there uh, anything actually to that? Or yeah, oh, networking is 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 a very very big deal. Um, the best ways to network are to attend um, any like any IA firms that are at, like you see on Facebook or whatever, or people that companies that you're kind of looking into. I want to maybe I want to get on their roster. They have free trainings. They have low cost trainings. Um, they may do carrier certifications. Like you could pick up your all state certification, your USAA, your Liberty Safeco, your State Farm, whatever it is, right? Um, go yep. to Alacrity and get your State Farm and maybe go to Pilot and get your all state or whatever it is, right? Go to those because you're going to be able to network with the, the other kids in class. And also the instructors, a lot of times the instructors are part of like their HR recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not only just like up there like saying, all right, well, this is a window and here's, you know, the little, they're also watching people in the class, right? So they're watching you to see if you show up on time, right? If you're attentive and you're taking notes and everything and not sitting there scrolling on your phone. Um, if you're asking questions, if you have a, a, assignments in class, how will you do on that or, you know, does it look like you're trainable, like that you're, that it's clicking with you, right? So that and they will tell you, I don't care what firm they're with. Somebody will say, we're looking for people that this clicks with because that's, that's one of the keys, right? And they're going to 
they could pull you aside and say, hey, listen, you know, you, you did really great in class. Um, we got some claims in your area. Um, we want to give them to you, see how you do. Right. Yeah. Or it's all hands on deck. We need, you know, we, we there's a uh, four feet of snow in, uh, you know, Bend, Oregon, and, and we need somebody up there. You know, we, we're, we're pulling people out of class for that because we don't have enough adjusters because everybody else is down on the hurricane or whatever it is. Right. Um, so those kind of things, absolutely 100% go to all of them. If you can, you're pretty close to, to Dallas, Fort Worth area, um, being in Louisiana. Um, there's that's where mo a lot of the training centers are mobile alabama there's another place um you know san antonio there's there's some firms in san antonio and some training outfits go to all, go to as many as you can and and also a lot of firms have um conferences right so mm -hmm. some and they, they experiment with things every year they do little different things but like you could go crawford cat conference which is at the, the first of march um they have uh and, and they've got training. You can get your state farm certification there and there's, there's interviews and there's all, it's a whole week long thing. Right. Um, Paysetter does a, like a road show and they've had conferences in the past in Tulsa. Um, I mean, every, you almost pick the firm and they're going to have some kind of like a recruiting event, especially right now this year, because of the quote unquote talent crisis. Um, the firms are really desperate, desperate for people. So it's a good time to be doing this, right? And they, and they have a lot of resources. A lot of the companies um, have, have rebuilt their training centers. Um, in my 20 years doing this, since 99, I watched in the very, very beginning, everybody had training and then everybody like just deleted their training centers and they, they took all their training away because it was too expensive for them to, to do that. And it was, Nobody had any training, and no, none of the firms had any training for several years, and now they're kicking back up again. Um, so everybody's got some kind of training. It's either free, or it's low cost, or it's they'll. Um, if you attend the training, you pay three hundred fifty bucks for it, and then if you go deploy with them within ninety days, then they'll pay you pay back the three fifty kind of a thing. Some firms are doing that as, as an incentive, but. So, so do those kind of things. So go to any training that you, you can get your hands on, go to the conferences and in particular, go to the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters convention in January, which in 2023 is going to be in Vegas again. Um, I think it's going to be in Reno in 2024, which is cool because I think that's, there's a ski hill close to there, which would be, and it's a lot closer to me, but that's, a couple of years down the road. So NACA, the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters is a great organization to, to join as an adjuster. It's really, really inexpensive to have a membership um, as, uh, as a member of NACA. Um, they have a lot of resources as far as mentorships. You know, you can get in the, into the directory and, um, you know, find mentors especially there's a lot of people that have been in, in that particular organization for decades. Um, yeah. All the firms, the big, the big thing with, with the convention is, is that in this particular, this year, 2022, um, there was like 60 I firms at the convention and they were interviewing. Oh, wow. So they had boot and that what they weren't the only ones or they had like tax people that, you know, like a CPA that, that knows how to do like our kind of, taxes for our kind of work, a whole bunch of other companies were there. Um, but they were, all the firms had their little booth set up and you could get under the app and set up an interview. Right. So huh. if this was December, <laughs> I'd be yeah. telling you need to go drop everything else and go to that 100%. Um, but so January. yeah, so next January. So they just, I mean, it was just literally like, January 23rd, the week of the 23rd, I think oh. was, so just missed it. Um, yeah. But yeah, we just got back from, it. and we, so adjust for TV goes, um, we try to go, we go to some of the conferences, but we can't go to all of them. Um, but networking is huge. Um, conferences, certifications, trainings, even if it's like something that you're like, ah, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. I just go just, you know, especially if it's, you know, like a half day drive over to Dallas, and it's going to be for like a one day thing, um, just like an introduction to whatever, whatever it is, I would go and just yeah. meet people because they start seeing your face. 
especially if you're going to like, you know, like say pilot, for example, just totally as an example, maybe they have a whole bunch of these in a row and you keep going to them, right? And they're over in Fort Worth and you, you're showing your face in there. They're going to, they're going to recognize you after a couple of those. Right. Um, yeah. so every little bit, every little bit helps for sure with networking. I figured I, I didn't, and I, and I do get the, uh, the conference emails and stuff, you know, from mm-hmm. different, different IA firms, um, Go to them. <laughs> I guess that's something I need to ask. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and they're fun too. I mean, it's, you know, there's, they'll have CE training classes, you know, that you can get f- to put towards your licenses and they have events in the evenings. They've, and they'll, a lot of times they'll feed you lunches and dinners and things like that. You, they, you know, they may do top golf or, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, it, it, they, they look at those as networking events primarily. Yeah. So basically I need a, uh, uh, I feel like a, a, a storm would help <laughs> also, yeah. you know, cause I, I've had quite a few interviews, yep. um, but without experience, it's just, it just seems like it's kind of a struggle, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, they're, they're until you're like a, a proven quantity, it's going to be, it's, it's, you're down the list. Right. So they, there's a lot of people that are wanting to be adjusters or that are adjusters. Um, so one thing I'll tell you that you could do in the meantime is um, get on with inspectors on demand.com and also with wegolook.com and those are like the photo and scope outfits right so they'll it's app based <clears throat> excuse me app based um kind of like doing the uber or postmates or lyft or whatever where they say hey we've got a you know four o'clock tomorrow i'm gonna go look at this roof accept or decline right and then you go over there with your phone and you take pictures, it'll tell you which picture to take next. And you take, oh, take that one and then walk over here, take that one. And then hit submit and wave fire to the homeowner and then go on to the next one. And that's, um, Inspectors On Demand is pilots, like their company. Um, and they told yep. me that they, they will reach into their sort of like their roster of inspectors on demand and it, another one's adjusters on demand, which is for licensed adjusters. Inspectors on demand, I don't think you have to have a license. Um, and they'll reach into to those wells of resources for people before they'll start picking random, you know, the resumes off the top of the pile that just showed up from the mail, the mail room. Um, so those are good things to get on with. Um, it lets you get your hands dirty with with practicing with your scoping, right? And and maybe a little bit of interaction with the homeowner. Um, contractor might be there, right? So um I would I would do those as well as the uh the the CIS.claims.global, which is Crawford Inspection Services. Um if you're into doing like roof inspections only. So yeah. you can kind of you can kind of get started with that stuff right now. You might even check in with Paysetter. Um, with their Evo program, they may have some remote stuff that you could do, but. Okay. And then you just yeah. that's, hang loose uh, and wait that's for the hail to fall. Right. <laughs> that's what we're waiting on. Yep. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be a lot of hail. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Well, worst case scenario, nothing happens. But, you know, if nothing happens with hail season, there's still always. The, the possibility for a hurricane. I mean, I feel like Louisiana has gotten beaten up in the last few years. Um, yeah. You know, and, and you probably, you know, if, being in Northern Louisiana, you still had hurricane damage up there, right? So at least yeah. some, like some shingles blown off and trees blown down and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I think that's a, a, a common misconception that when people think, you know, oh, I'm going to go on a hurricane deployment, it's all going to be just the house, it's just bare slab. Just the houses are leveled, right? And you're going to be on the coast. The vast majority of the claims that you get or that there are on hurricanes are inland small claims, right? Water spot on the ceiling, shingles blown off, right? Maybe some water came in the window and damaged the floor over here, uh, broke the window, tree limb on the house. Um, so practice those kinds of claims um, no matter what else you do. And when you do get your opportunity, whenever it happens, you'll be able to hit the ground running for sure. Anything else you can think of? Well, I think that's pretty much most of my answers. Like I said, you, uh, you answered like three of them in, in, uh, 
in the one answer a while ago. Um, basically, I was I was asking how many licenses should you maintain, and is it worth carrying a bunch of licenses? You said great to have all. I of think them, so. Right? Um, Ideally, yeah, it's expensive, and you may and you may never use your New Mexico license, but you know maybe yeah. you will. Who knows? Um, right. So, do you have? Are you a subscriber to Adjuster TV Plus? I'm not, but I might be after this. <laughs> well, because you because you agreed to come on here and so graciously letting me air this, um, we'll give you a free year of Adjuster TV Plus. Wow, that's awesome! Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'll send you I'll send you an email when we get off of here. But listen, thank Thomas, I really want to uh, thank you for coming on, and I hope that. Uh, and answering your questions, I can help other people, you know, kind of, you know, I know, cause I know a lot of people have the same questions. I feel like I answered the, a lot of the same questions over and over again, but um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. And again, I'll be in touch. And if you have questions going forward, um, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Okay, I sure will. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate yeah. all the advice for the invite. No problem. Well, you have a great uh, evening and we'll catch up with you later. Sounds good, Matt. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, we'll see you. Adjuster TV. If you can't be an example, be a warning.